the, the trends here may be changing uh, because President Trump, former President Trump, has been leading uh, national poll after national poll over President Biden for the last couple of weeks. But not in this one. And maybe it's an outlier, maybe it's not. Yeah, that's an outlier, though, right? Because eight other polls show the opposite. We'll see. It could be an outlier or that could be the start of a new trend. We don't know. Is the Biden campaign finally starting to turn things around? If you take a look at the latest Quinnipiac poll, you could possibly make that argument because for the first time in a while, they show that President Joe Biden is leading Donald Trump by a pretty large margin. But don't get too excited too soon because another poll that came out a day before had very different results. So let's get into the Quinnipiac poll. Um, it shows that Biden is in fact leading Donald Trump by a whopping six points. That's not a small amount. Biden holds a lead over Trump 50 to 44% among registered voters in a hypothetical general election matchup, according to a Quinnipiac University national poll of registered voters. In Quinnipiac University's December 20th, 2023 poll, the same hypothetical 2024 general election matchup was too close to call as President Biden received 47% of the vote and former President Trump received 46% of the vote. So that was within the margin of error, which is plus or minus 1%. The same goes for the more recent Quinnipiac poll. And so according to Quinnipiac, Biden has been able to increase his lead against Donald Trump pretty significantly compared to last month. It is being referred to as an outlier poll because we have now seen over the last several months that poll after poll shows Trump trailing, or I'm sorry, Biden trailing Trump by, depending on which poll you're looking at, a certain number of percentage points. And when you take a look at what Biden would need to accomplish on a national level in the polling, he would need to beat Trump by at least five points to secure a win. Now, women might end up being the people who save Biden at the end of the day. And this is probably one of the reasons why you'll hear a lot of conservative talking heads, either on cable media or even in digital media, just going on and on about how women are the problem. It's because they're not married. Once they get married, they become more conservative, even though that's not necessarily what happens, but they think that women are a problem. And when you look at this poll, you can see why. Women, 58 to 36 percent support Biden, according to the Quinnipiac poll, up from December when it was 53 to 41 percent. Men, though, you see a little bit of a reversal. So, men, 53 to 42 percent support Trump, largely unchanged from December when it was 51 to 41 percent. Now, we'll see what happens. I, I feel, I still feel uneasy in regard to Biden's performance in these polls, even the more recent poll from Quinnipiac. Because remember, this Quinnipiac poll is simply polling likely registered voters. They're not focusing on swing states, they're just focusing on how Biden is performing in a matchup against Donald Trump, nationally speaking. And Steve Ducey presented other interesting tidbits from this Quinnipiac survey, especially when you consider the impact of third party candidates and how Biden would do in a matchup, not with Donald Trump, but rather Nikki Haley. Let's take a look. This poll does have Haley doing better against Biden than Trump. She has got him, according to Quinnipiac, by five, 47 to 42 nationally. But this is a matchup that's unlikely to happen based on current polling that puts Trump way ahead of her in primary states that she needs at the moment. And we may also have an answer to the question, who do third party candidates hurt? Ultimately, according to this poll, they hurt Trump because both Biden and Trump lose support when polled against the major third parties. But Biden still wins in this poll. And if RFK Jr. continues pulling in 14%, he is certainly going to be a spoiler for one candidate or another because that is a huge percentage of the voting public. So interestingly enough, if the matchup were between Nikki Haley and Joe Biden, RFK Jr. dropping out would actually end up helping Biden rather than Nikki Haley. And the reason for that would be because of the fact that Nikki Haley is a brand of you know Republican politics, so-called neoconservatives that I think the 
average Republican voter has really moved away from. And I can understand why that would be the case. You know, you have to keep in mind that after lengthy wars in the Middle East, lengthy wars that a lot of, you know, current voters either had family members fighting in in multiple deployments or they themselves had fought in in multiple deployments. They don't want more war. So when they hear the hawkish rhetoric coming from the likes of Nikki Haley, they are not interested in that messaging, which is why in my opinion, it's not so shocking that Nikki Haley hasn't been able to garner enough support to be a genuine threat to Donald Trump. Some people in the right are still holding on to hope, holding on to the notion that the Republican Party can go back to its pre MAGA days. I'm really not in the camp of thinking that's possible, but crazier things have happened. So I guess we'll see. But for now, it does seem to be a likely matchup between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Now, with all that said, I do want to just note that RFK Jr. right now is hurting Trump because he's kind of skimming from the support that Trump would get if RFK Jr. were not running. So even if you believe in this Quinnipiac poll and you think, okay, I'm, there's a comfortable Biden lead now, we can rest easy. Okay, but we don't know what the wild card situation of RFK Jr. will be. And if he does decide to drop out and is no longer a factor in this race, well, then it's likely that his support will consolidate behind Donald Trump, thus increasing his performance and potentially giving him enough of a lead to beat Biden. So it's still too close for comfort in my opinion. And what makes the situation even more uncomfortable for those who are concerned about another Trump term is that a day before Quinnipiac came out with this poll, they there was another poll done by Morning Consult with Bloomberg and the results were not good. Especially because this particular poll focused mainly on swing states. And we all know that at the end of the day, the outcome of the election is not dependent on the popular vote. It's dependent on the performance that these candidates have in the swing states. So basically, a new set of swing state polls from Bloomberg and Morning Consult suggests that the former President Donald Trump would comfortably beat Joe Biden if the 2024 election were held today. And this is kind of in line with a previous story we did on the New York Times Siena College poll, which showed Trump beating Biden in almost every single swing state. At that time, that was considered an outlier, but that has now been reinforced by this poll done by Morning Consult. So let's get to the results. According to the seven separate surveys conducted in North Carolina, Nevada, Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona, Trump boasts leads in every single one. So according to Morning Consult, Trump is actually performing better in all of these swing states, even compared to the Siena College New York Times poll, because that poll showed Biden leading in at least one of the swing states. That's not the case with this morning console poll. So let's look at the results, starting with North Carolina, which shows Trump with a 10 point lead over Biden. Then you go to Nevada, Trump has an eight point lead over Biden. Georgia, again, Trump has an eight point lead over Biden. Let's take a look at the rest of the states. In Wisconsin, Trump still has a lead, five points. Same with Michigan, Trump has a lead of five points. Michigan is the least surprising to me when you take into account the large Arab American and Muslim voting block there that has soured on Biden. I'm wondering if that has factored into the results in Michigan. Then you go to Pennsylvania where Trump has a slightly smaller lead, 3%. Same with Arizona, Trump Trump has a 3% lead over Biden in that state as well. And Morning Consult had done the same poll just a month prior and Unfortunately, Trump has increased his lead when you compare this month's results to the results that were released last month. So let's take a look at that. All right, so last month, the poll showed that Trump had a four point lead over Biden in Wisconsin, a six point lead over Biden in Georgia, a four point lead over Biden in Michigan. So he was still leading, but the numbers were smaller. In Pennsylvania, Trump had a two point lead. In Nevada, three point lead over Biden. In North Carolina, Trump had a nine point lead over Biden. And in Arizona, Trump had a four point lead over Biden. So when you focus specifically on the battleground states, 
the results are not good. They are concerning to say the least. And the fact of the matter is, we all know that Biden is an incredibly vulnerable candidate to go up against Donald Trump. When you go back to the results of the 2020 presidential election, the general election, there were some swing states where Biden, yes, won, but he didn't win by much. And the sentiment in the country today is just different from what it was in 2020. There were a lot of Americans who soured on Donald Trump at the time because of his handling of the coronavirus pandemic. That sentiment has faded away and some of the foibles that we've seen in the Biden administration, namely his handling of the migrant crisis, his unwavering support for Israel regardless of what it does in the Gaza Strip. Those are things that start to really chip away at the vote Democratic voting base. Because remember the migrant crisis, I think for the first time, maybe in a long time, you have it impacting some of these big blue cities due to the busing program that, that Greg Abbott had engaged in. And so once you have the members of the Democratic base seeing what the migrant crisis means within their own cities and how much that is straining their resources and how difficult it's been for them. Well, then all of a sudden they're forced to really reconsider whether the Biden administration has handled immigration appropriately. They might. And I do believe they still are in favor of immigration, but they see that the system has kind of broken down and reforms need to be made. And while a lot of that really does fall on Congress, it's better for Congress to pass comprehensive legislation that the president then signs. Usually the voters place the blame on the president not Congress. And so we'll see how this all plays out. Again, we're getting mixed messages. We have two different polls that say two different things. But one of them hones in on the swing states. And in that poll, Biden is doing poorly. And so it is cause for concern. We'll see how it all plays out and we'll give you more details and updates as more polls come out for the general election. If you enjoyed this video, that's because of our members. They make us independent, they make us strong, and they make us honest. Become a member today by hitting the join button below.